W's and L's, the weekly recap show. Where we give a dub to the things that we like and an L's to the things that we don't. You are going first, my friend. Emma? Yup. I wasn't prepared for that. Yep. All right. Dubs or L's first? Let's go L's. Cool, because I got more of those. First <laughs> L I got is going out to Josh Gaddis, America's <laughs> worst offensive coordinator last year. Well, tied for first. At least worst A or B. Him and Brian Ferentz. Yeah, it's pretty close. Boy, I got fired. Yes, One did. year removed to from talking shit to Michigan fans about how much we were going to miss him and how much the offense was his, play call this, play call that. Well, lucky for Michigan fans, he might show up at your yeah, front He door. might not. Absolutely not. We've already hired uh, Mr. Dan Campbell. Still might show up. Analyst. No, he's not coming. He, he can show up if you want to. You ain't getting hired. You can come. We ain't gonna let you in. <laughs> That's over. Burnt that bridge, bro. Yikes. And then you sucked it up. You burnt a bridge at Michigan, and then you went and lost to Middle Tennessee State. Oof. I want to hear it. I want to hear it. Go take a year off and see if somebody will hire you back as a position coach. So that they can forget about everything, and then maybe yeah. you can get a job afterwards. Yeah, pretty much. Whew. Wait for somebody else to get fired to do an even worse job than you did, and then maybe, maybe you'll be back. But, boy, that head coaching trajectory seems like it is going clearly to the, le- to the left. Wrong way. No, no. Clearly to the left. Like, boy, you was mad not getting chose over Sharon Moore and Mike Hart. <laughs> you thought you was in bad shape then. Middle Tennessee State. Mm. You lost to a team that lost to Appalachian State. <laughs> oh, man, that was terrible. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, well. R.I.P. Josh Gaddis. Well, not R.I.P. Excuse me. R.I.P. to his job. So, we've been talking a lot about destroying franchises today, so I figured we might as well stick with the game. There is talk coming out of Lucasfilm that they may be continuing with the Ray Palpatine character, Ray Skywalker, whatever you're calling her, whatever. Mm -hmm. The Ray character. Yeah. Great character that was part of two of the worst Star Wars productions I've ever seen in my life. In um, Return of the Jedi and Last Jedi. Mm. Uh, trash. Unmitigated trash. And which is so bad because that first movie, Force Awakens, had so much promise. You know, they they were they were introducing new characters that we were somewhat interested in. We wanted to see how they grew. And then they had just enough nostalgia from, you know, the old movies to keep you tied in, interested, made a bunch of fucking mo- money. It's a top five film all time, grossing wise. And then, they shit the bed. oh, my God, Last Jedi. was I see I'm, I struggle sometimes to, to as to really rank them because Last Jedi and Rise of Skywalker were two of the worst Star Wars movies ever. I mean, day and night behind the prequel movies that people hated. Yeah. Like, wh- I would watch Revenge of the Sith a thousand times before I ever watch Rise of Skywalker again. Last Jedi was trash. But we're thinking about bringing her back, baby. <laughs> not Poe. Not Finn. The character that we essentially had there for three movies for absolutely no fucking reason. He ended up being just about this important to the entire arc. Mm. Man, they really botched that character. But, I mean, in the first movie, I was like, oh, shit. Black dude, lightsaber? I'm interested. Where's this going? Absolutely fucking nowhere. <laughs> nowhere. Mm. That was the answer. Nowhere. Yeah. Getting about this close to letting Ray know that he was force sensitive. Not that he loved her. No. We don't want any of that. We don't want any of that love triangle stuff. She's in love with with the guy she's never even, you know, had a conver- a real conversation with. She's in, in love with her mortal enemy. She's in love with the same guy who killed her mentor and his father. Oh, because that guy, you know, that character that everyone loves from the Star Wars franchise. Oh, he was a deadbeat daddy. Yeah, yeah. He was Star Cars lovers with Leia for forever. And that was the... That, that was the gist of their relationship. But once they had a kid, he had to get back to space because he's a deadbeat. <laughs> like, that's what they did to the fucking franchise. 
It's fuck. It's 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 insane. It's insane. It's insane. Mm. But in any case, I think this would be a mistake. I need. I think they need to move on from Daisy Ridley. Get back to some more storytelling around the characters that everyone likes from Star Wars: Vader, Obi Wan, Luke. Get back to that. Tell those stories. There are more stories to tell. You wrote books about this shit, right? And, 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 and the movies didn't encompass everything that happened in the books. You have ongoing comic series that involve these characters. Use that stuff. Mm-hmm. You can tell Star Wars stories with those characters until the end of time. There's no need to innovate something that is already successful. It's this hubris that I'm going to take what I want to put into Star Wars and it's going to be just as popular as Han Solo and 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 R two R uh, R two D two and C three P O and Luke and Leia and Chewbacca, yeah, my new character is going to be just as just as popular as them. Literally, generational icons. Only thing I have to do is keep feeding it to them, and eventually they'll have to take it. That's how you destroy a franchise. So nice. yeah, I'm not a fan of that at all. Of course, it's under Disney. You know, nothing personally against Daisy Ridley, but I just don't think. The Star Wars movies with her in it were all that good, except for Force Awakens. Uh, next L. Titans and Doom Patrol have both been that. canceled. Yep. That fuck that sucks. That does suck. Yeah. I mean what <coughs> what else is there now? Peace peace. Um, well, I think he's gonna overhaul James Gunn. He's gonna overhaul everything at DC. Did he come out with his his plan? I don't know. I don't think so. I didn't see anything. I didn't see anything either. But he said 10 days. And it's January 29th. Like, we're running out of January days for you to announce this. So, I would hope in the next three days or so. Uh, Yeah. We'll see. Who knows, bro. But one thing I do know is that when James Gunn got hired as the CEO, or him and Peter Saffron got hired as co-CEOs, the one thing that he decided right off the bat is that I'm not sharing this playground with anyone. Not Henry Cavill. Not the Rock, not the not the the you know the creators of the most popular TV series that are going on right now. In terms of DC content, I'm not sharing the playground. You can say what you want about that; he could either be successful with it or not. Mm-hmm. But he's not he's not sharing the sandbox. It's him. It's Peter Saffron. It's their plan, and it will be all the creators that they choose to work underneath that plan. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's going to be any more collaborative than what you get with, with Kevin Feige over at, um, at at Marvel Studios in terms of who gets the final say on what gets made and what doesn't. Yeah. Right? That part is very similar between the two. It's Kevin Feige's go or no go over at Marvel. It's James Gunn's go or no go at, at, at so DC. Hard. So right away when you start talking about Henry Cavill and the type of influence he has on characters, no. Not going to work. The Rock trying to put himself in his production company as a foothold of the DC Universe. No, it's not going to work. We're not going to do it. We'll just scrap it. And he's not afraid to start over either. That's Popular or not. Could be a good thing, though. Popular or not. He's got one of the most popular film-driven comic book stars right now in Aquaman. And he's going to scrap it for Lobo. Mm-hmm. Or at least reports say. But that's some kind of confidence, man. Mm-hmm. That's some kind of confidence. So the one thing that you will be able to take from this is that whether this is well-received or not very well-received, we know exactly who to lay it at the feet at. Yes. Right? There will be no confusion about whose decision it was to do certain things with characters, James Gunn and Peter Safra. You took ownership of this now. so Because you took all the alphas out of the room. Mm-hmm. And you're going to replace them with younger, less influential actors. It seems like, which could so, work for all for all it's worth. It could actually end up working. We just have to kind of wait and see. There's not going to be guys in there trying to steal pieces of the pie. Mm-hmm. But it's all on you now. So if it doesn't work out, it's because it was your vision, your decisions, your run. Mm-hmm. It's all on you now. And it's a tough place to start because you got rid of people that people love, yeah. like Cavill. Yeah. So. Yep. You yep. gotta make a big splash quick. My last L is going out to Don Lemon mm. for not being able to take a joke. Oh, so Don Lemon wore a uh, a couple weeks ago. He wore a suit with a hoodie underneath it mm. while he was doing a a read, I guess. 
Mm-hmm. And so he got mu- made fun of about it pretty bad on the internet. Okay. And it Stephen like Colbert. Chappelle and Tyrone Biggums. Probably. That's what it sounds like. I mean, kind of, but not the same color scheme and white okay. lips. Oh, okay. Well, fair. And red hat. So he does that. Colbert makes a joke about it on the late night show, right? Calls him out, essentially. As talk so his co-host about. brings it up during their show in his new time slot now, not prime time. Mm-hmm. And, man, I've never seen a man get his panties so tight so quickly. It was just like, yeah, I mean, you know, honestly, I, I didn't expect it. I didn't expect that uh, from, from Colbert. And, you know, just I, it really made me think about how, you know, you you women get accosted and and, 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 and and assaulted about the way that you dress and the things that you wear. And I really felt some of that. You know, I really feel how that is now as a gay man getting critiqued about the things that I wear. He went there. He went there. Because a talk show host did his Damn, job? He went there. I understand now as a gay man who's had his wardrobe, you know, critiqued, how you women feel about having your your wardrobe critiqued in your place of work. Bro, We're shut allies. Up. Shut up, bro. No disrespect to your sexuality, your person, or identity, but that's some bitch shit. <laughs> that's some bitch shit. Shut up. Are you really crying over somebody making fun of you wearing a hoodie under a blazer? That's funny. It's funny. Let it roll off your shoulders and move the hell on. This man went on a whole, yeah, I just, I, I, I didn't expect that from Colbert. You didn't tell, you didn't expect the comedian to make a joke? Like, how insecure are these celebrities? Seriously. What does being gay have to do with you wearing a hoodie under a blazer? Is that how you How the fuck do you know how women feel because somebody made fun of you wearing a hoodie under a blazer? <laughs> what are you even talking about? Like, some people just want to be victimized so bad. You got all these things in your life. That are already against you. But you working overtime to victimize yourself. You black man. You gay. You in the public eye. And you are working extra hard to make sure people think you are an elitist punk. Yeah. I can't talk about your wardrobe. That hoodie probably costs more than my rent. <laughs> that's what you that like, like. That's what you can rush your laurels on. Like I can see Doja Cat. When she wore that ridiculous ass red outfit, Bam. I can see her saying something like this. But you in a hoodie, knock it off, stop it. Well, I mean, not even her. She did that shit on purpose. No, she did. You went out there and you looked the exactly the way you wanted to look. Uh, yeah, she looked like a a herpes flare up. Like that, that shit looked crazy. That's like fuck. seeing her standing there and all of them red ass fucking crystals all over her body, <laughs> and then Kylie Jenner with a fucking. Man sized with Mufasa fucking, on her shoulder. God damn. <laughs> that was the lion from coming to America. Where did the fuck? Big ass lion head. Now who shot that? Who shot it? Who shot that lion? Mm-mm. We not supposed to be doing that no more. Well, what's crazy is that she wore that to a fashion show where somebody else was wearing it. The same outfit? Mm-hmm. So there was two people with the lion on their shoulder. Y'all done, y'all done ran up on the Lion's Pride for y'all's dresses. That's crazy. Yep. But y'all love Lion King. They That's nuts, They killed bro. Mufasa and Nala for That's crazy. Outfit. But you love Lion King, bro. Niggas be capping. All right, two dubs. First dub, going out to the boys. The boys, single-handedly, outrated every single Disney Plus show in 2022. Not a surprise. Every single last one. Not a surprise. Miss me with your Miss Marvel, even though I enjoyed some of that series. Miss me with your She-Hulk. You can keep that shit. Please know. Miss me with Falcon and Winter Soldier and Loki and WandaVision, those, those which was my before. favorite. Those were the year before, right? Did they oh, you're right. Those all? were in 2021. Uh-huh. So 2022 was She-Hulk, Miss Marvel, oh, Hawkeye? Hawkeye, Moon Knight. Moon Knight, yep. Am I missing one? Not that I can think of. Was What If in 2021? 2021, yep. Okay, so those shows. Yep. And then also, obviously, the DC shows. The uh, It was the number one rated TV show in 2023, in 2022. Number one ranked superhero show? Superhero show, sorry. Okay. Oh, that's an accomplishment with all of the shows out there. Now, would you be interested to know that there wasn't a Disney Plus show in the top 20? <laughs> no, Miss Marvel was the best one. 
there wasn't a single Disney Plus show in the top 20. Would it surprise you to know what the number one rated show on Disney Plus is? I'll give you five guesses and you won't come up with it. Wait, the number one rated Disney show on show. Disney Plus, period. MCU, Star Wars, anything. Proud Family, Louder and Prouder. No. <clears throat> well. Shows? Mm-hmm. You know, it probably wasn't a Marvel. Live movie. action cartoon doesn't matter. Number one viewed. Could it have been a show from like that actually showed on Disney, but then they put it on the Disney Plus? Yeah, whatever is on Disney Plus. Oh yeah, I'm not getting that then. I'm not getting that. I'm then. giving you five tries. Fine, I'll, I'll, I'll guess for the sake of uh, Miss Marvel, no. She Hulk, no. Uh, Dog with a blog. <laughs> that was a joke. Um, Hawkeye, no. It's not know. MCU. I know it's obviously. not, but I'm literally just guessing for the sake of your your five guesses. It's Bluey. Do you know what Bluey is? I've heard of it. It's a cartoon about dingoes from Australia. Uh-oh. It's an Australian cartoon. It's an IP that they bought from Australia. <laughs> it's the most viewed product on Disney+. Plus. Mm. Imagine spending $25 million per episode on all of those TV shows that you just named, and the number one watched IP on your streaming service is an Australian cartoon that you bought. <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's wild. Does it make sense now why Disney lost $120 billion last year? Yes. Does that start to come into view? Yes. They are not making worthwhile content for people. Mm-hmm. Unless you're Australian, apparently. Well, they're not making that, so. I, I don't know how else to diagnose that. You're putting up more money than anyone else in the industry, films and television, and you're not in the top 20 <laughs> of, viewage, of, of viewership. Sheesh. You have the some of the oldest libraries when it comes to popular IPs in all of the world. You got Star Wars and Marvel. And people are watching an Australian cartoon about dingoes, <laughs> about coyotes. <laughs> You got National Geographic. You got ESPN. You got... <laughs> Fam, you have Avengers Endgame on your streaming service. People want to watch Bluey. I want to watch Bluey now. What's the hype about? It, it actually is my, one of my son's favorite cartoons. Oh, well, there you it, go. It's, it's a popular cartoon. Yeah. But my point is, they didn't make it. Right. You have a streaming service set up specifically for Disney content, and your Disney content isn't driving it. <laughs> mm. Funny. Woo! Comedy. That's that's embarrassing, actually. It is. All right. Last dub. Going out to Omar Sy, one of my favorite actors. Mm-hmm. Talked about him. My dark my dark horse, the child pick. He actually did an interview. You know, he's a a, a French actor, mm. where he was kind of talking about racism overseas in Europe, mm. okay. and uh, you know, how difficult it was to make kind of work through his acting career there, mm-hmm. and they. Came after him, you know, similarly to what they would do here in the U.S. when people talk out about those kind of things. But they came after him and, and asked him to apologize and, you know, said he was making the French look bad and all this other stuff. It's just always, I am fully aware that racism exists in every part, in every corner of the earth. I don't need Omar Sarr to tell me that. Sure. And it's not going to help your case telling him to shut up about it either. No, at all. I know there are racist people in France. It's okay. I understand. They're everywhere. No. It's a reality. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't make you look any better as a country coming down on one of your, probably one of the most popular French actors there are because he's talking about colorism and racism in the acting ranks in his time. In his it's career not him well. making you look bad. It's you. You, you looking look making you look bad. That's it for me, though. Let's go ahead and take a look at the old list. See what I got here. You ended with what? Dubs or L's? Dubs. All right, let's start with my dubs. First off, I'm going to give a dub to none other than Ohio State legend James Laurinaitis. Mm, I see that. Because he was a with. assistant? My boy can't get a position. Well, I mean, he didn't have coach? a position at Notre Dame. So he was a grad yeah. assistant at Notre Dame? Yeah, he was. The disrespect. Yep, so he left Notre Dame 
and came over to where he belonged in the first place. Now maybe he'll help us get our our linebacker situation on point. Not Is that he? it was the worst. I mean, there's a linebacker coach there already who's going to have more say than James Laronitis. Sure, but he's going to help. That's what I said. I, how? They're not going to bring him to not help. At how all. much? How much influence do you think grads, grad, GAs actually have on the development of the players? Now, I will say this: he'll probably be working with those players yeah. more closely than the position mm-hmm. coaches, just because. They're like the assistants to the position coach. Yeah. Right? When he has to have a macro view of everybody in the position group, James Laronitis can pinpoint certain guys and give them, you know, pointers on what they can do and all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. He's not the main guy, though. Yeah. They will still go the way of their position coach. Because he's dictating what James tells them, what he teaches them, Mm -hmm. what he shows them, Mm -hmm. what he has them working on. Yeah. How often. So... Why not just make him the linebackers coach? Have your linebackers look that good that you need to keep the guy you have now? It's Jim Knowles. Okay, so he doesn't need to be a position coach and the defense. I couldn't coordinator remember if he was now. linebacker and sa- or or safety, but yeah, he's linebacker coach. Hey man, James Laronitis might be coaching the linebackers. I mean, that's why I would do it. I, I want to see him make, make him the linebacker moves coach to Heartline. That's what I want to see. I mean, eventually, at some point, he's going to start recruiting the linebackers, and mm-hmm. then maybe he'll do the same thing on defense. That it can't, but that, that's the thing. Is. James Laronitis would absolutely kill him recruiting for you. Yeah. He can't recruit. He's a graduate assistant. Right. GAs right. don't recruit. But, hey, we'll, we'll, we'll see what ends up happening with this move. I like the move because it gets him here. And so then let's, let's work his way up. Okay. Let's see how it goes. Absolutely. My next and last <laughs> dub – goes to the movie Drumline because I believe whoever was in charge of casting made a great decision. So supposedly, according to the person who I'm going to mention here in a second, he did an audition for Nick Cannon's spot in Drumline. The Mm. only reason he didn't supposedly get the position is because Nick Cannon went above and beyond and actually took some sort of drumming lessons Mm. to add to his, his audition. His dedication. Yeah. Great movie, by the way. Yes. It has a lot of great rewatchability now. And I, I think that was a part to, you know, Nick Cannon's performance as Devin in, in mm-hmm. Drumline. Sure. Because I don't think this other person would have done that. And, in fact, what he went on to do makes more sense because of not getting the Drumline role. This person is none other than Clifford T.I. Harris. Shut up! <laughs> Auditioned to play the role of Devin in Drumline, but didn't get it because of Nick Cannon. Nah, ATL is way better. Yeah, right? Rashad is way better than right? Devin Miles for T.I. My, my point exactly. Like, it, it Drumline is, is perfect symmetry for me because it's a hood movie, but it's also for general audiences, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. It's like one of them hood movies that you can put – out to the general audience, and they'll follow it, and they'll be able to understand it, and they will mm-hmm. pull on the same things that you're pulling on in terms of enjoyment. Yes. The music, the bands, all of that stuff. It's interesting. The love affair with Zoe Saldana. Can you imagine if those roles were switched? No. If Nick Gannon was Rashad? No. I could not. Let's not think about that. That. Oh, my God. It would be nuts. I don't want to skate with you, rap with you, nothing. Get off my porch. <laughs> no, absolutely not. That would ruin ATL. It oh would ruin God. Drumline, I would think. Big Boy and Nick Cannon ripping. Oh, my God. That would be a com- That movie would be a comedy. Is that Big Little Brother? That would have made that line so much funnier. No, that's a fact. That's your Big Little Brother. <laughs> Plus, I don't see Nick Cannon and um, <coughs> Ant. Ant. Uh, Evan Ross. I don't see that really working very well. I don't know. That just wouldn't have been. Yeah, I believe the the brother dynamic between Tip and and Evan Ross a lot yeah. more than I probably would have believed it with Nick Cannon. Yep. Yep. Yeah, that was that was that worked out the way that it was supposed to. I agree, for sure. All right, on to my L's. This one caught me. Uh, this this story topic caught me because I'm a huge sneakerhead. The sneaker market as a whole has been down quite a bit. To the point where, like, even the most popular shoe releases 
are like sitting on shelves. I heard Jordan sales are way down. They are. Like you got Foot Locker's full of retros in the fucking displays. That's yeah. unheard of. I literally just bought a bought a pair of ones, which mm. usually sell out very quickly. And like later that weekend, they were still still there. Yeah, like you can still buy them in hey, my yo, size. Hey, ma- hey, Phil Knight. Maybe ostracizing Kyrie Irving wasn't the best thing you could do. Maybe canceling the Kyrie's, which were one of the most popular basketball shoes you were selling, wasn't the best idea. Right. Now your most popular fashion shoes not selling in the retro Jays. Oh my God. It's, oh my it's, goodness. it's looking real tough over there, and they're oh making really desperate moves. So uh, I don't know if I ever mentioned on the podcast. I don't think I did, but they went and started suing. Oh, you know what? I think a long time ago, Reem actually might have mentioned this. Did he? I think so. So Nike went on to sue a couple of black shoe creators who were making shoes similar to the Jordan 1. Oh, y'all hungry. Y'all trying to eat up them sales. But that's mm. that like that that happened maybe a little while ago. Both of those guys are still selling these shoes. Okay. I actually just bought a pair. He is overcharging for those shoes, but I really wanted this pair. But anyway, so, yeah, like there's a couple of black creators who are making shoes that look exactly like the ones, except instead of the Nike check, they have a lightning bolt. Mm. And so now Nike is so desperate that they have started suing Bape because you remember the Bapes, they kind of look like horses. Who, is Bape still a company? They, they still are, selling shoes? But they're not, I don't think they're owned by who they were originally owned by. Whatever. Where are they selling they're. shoes at? I ain't seen no Bates and I don't know, in at least a I don't decade. I don't know if they're selling shoes anymore either. Okay. I think they're just selling like clothes. But they're, sell, they're suing them for the logo? They're suing them because the, the Bapes look like horses, but instead of the, the check, they had the little star. Bam. That's not even your comp. Nobody's wearing those no more unless you're fighting about Japan. I think they wear, wear Bapes over there. But nigga. Nobody's wearing Bapes. Yeah, well, funny enough, Nike a while back got sued by a Japanese company by the name of Onitsuka. Uh, they made Tigers, so Onitsuka was the company. Mm. Because Nike held the exclusive rights to selling these shoes in America. But instead, Nike decided to transform their shoe ever so slightly to the Cortez. The Nike Cortezes originally looked like this Onitsuka Tiger. Oh, so, so they that's essentially how we got Cortez. They stole the design for the Tiger and made the Cortez. So essentially what they're suing people for They've now They've already done. is what Nike was doing when they first started their company. Mm. Shady business. That's why they know who to sue. Like, hey, we done this. Let's go find the motherfuckers that's doing to us. But Especially Bape. Bape was doing this back in like 2002. Fam, I have not seen a pair of Bapes since I was at least in middle school. Yeah. At least. Yeah. Who's wearing those? Yeah, man, it just sounds like you accidentally, well, not even accidentally, you did it quite on purpose. But to virtue signal, you axed off probably the most popular basketball shoe line that you had. And then simultaneously, the the sales for your luxury or your fashion shoes dropped off the, the side of the earth too. Mm-hmm. Like I have never walked into a Foot Locker and seen fours, fives, sevens, nines, mm-hmm. s- ones sitting on the display rack when you pass the store. Yep. You may catch a couple of them holes on the wall. Mm-hmm. You never catch them on the display where they put the fucking Air Maxes in Harachis. But they're usually the colors that nobody wants. Like the colorway, yeah, the ones that's on the wall. Yeah, you never get a a colorway that you want. Yeah, these niggas are putting the fours, the fives, the nines, the ones right there as you walking past it. Oh no, please buy these. Yeah, whoo, times is hard. Maybe niggas have finally woken up to say, "Hey, I'm spending two hundred dollars a pop, and I look like every nigga at the bar." Oh yeah, no, I used to hate that. Like I'm just, I'm a twin, literally, everywhere I go. Yeah, no, I maybe they're uh, finally waking up to that. There was I went to a Kevin Hart concert here in Columbus like a few years ago, and there was a crew of white boys, like three of them, that were all wearing the exact same Jordans. I was like, y'all niggas. Are what is going on? What is going on? What is this? Y'all twinning? Y'all in the thruple? What's up? What's going on? Triplets? But if you are a sneakerhead, now is a good time to cop some shoes that you you wanted because the market is in the tank. It's it's it's. Super easy to get whatever shoe you want. I mean, they absolutely deserve it. 
Yeah, I agree too. Absolutely deserve it. My next L is going to be for supposedly the rumor that Girls Trip Two is coming out with the original. <coughs> Thank you for for bringing that up. Yeah, um, Tiffany Haddish shouldn't be getting another role. Y'all make me sick, man. I'm so tired of y'all. I'm I'm so I'm I am so fucking sick of y'all and your flowing moral standards that just mm-hmm. they they come and go mm-hmm. they come and go so bill cosby is canceled forever r kelly can never make amends you tried to cancel michael jackson until we found out the allegations were false mm-hmm. and some of y'all don't even want to come to terms with the fact that the allegations are false some of y'all are still running with the narrative that michael jackson touched little boys yeah. dl hughley but I, 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 I'll, I'll regress on that one. But Tiffany Haddish makes you excited for the girls' trip, too. Yeah, there was people who were like, I can't even see them recasting that role. I only see Tiffany in that role, so we need to get that original. And it's, and it's okay for her to continue to make money off of the community, and she abused our children. Mm. Right? Right? This woman used her relationship with a close friend to procure two children, a girl and a boy, for these scenes with Aerie Spears. And then tried to silence them afterwards. Mm-hmm. Told their mother, oh, they're not cut out for acting. Essentially, you, you, you're essentially trying to erase these kids' acting career before it even gets started. Yep. They're, they're not acting material. Because, because the young lady didn't want to perform fellatio on a breadstick. Because the young man didn't want to get oiled up by a grown-ass man while he was pretending to be aroused by him. Mm. But... That's y'all girl. She was funny with the grapefruit and girls trip. So we got to have her at number two, right? I can't stand y'all. And I'll never believe y'all when y'all come out with these, these, these sweeping, uh, 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 these, these, these sweeping grandstanding summations of people and their wrongdoings. You don't, you don't care. Only thing that tells me is that you don't like that person enough to look the other way. Mm-hmm. How the hell can we allow Tiffany Hatch to do what she did to some black kids? This is community talk now we talking. To do what she did to some black children and still gleefully line up to give her our dollars. I'm not signing up for nothing Absolutely Tiffany Haddish is. First of all, don't don't let me sit up here and say that nobody can ever come back from their worst moment. But it's been it's been a little over a year since we found out all of this shit. Oh, she get the family quiet. She paid a little bit of money. She handled it outside of court, so we good? Y'all crazy. Y'all crazy. Not to mention that every single time we turn a blind eye to something like this, it comes up again. Y'all telling me all these grown folks that hate Cosby now. Oh, we knew. We knew. Everybody knew. Everybody knew what Cosby was about. Everybody knew what he was doing when he was taking those women back to his offices. Everybody knew about Cosby and what he liked to do with his drinks. Everybody knew. But none of you did or said anything. None of you did or said anything. R. Kelly, man, everybody knew he was dating Aaliyah. Everybody knew he was messing with younger girls. Shit, people used to see R. Kelly showing up to high schools in Chicago. Mm -hmm. Everybody knew and no one did anything. So here we are with a story right in front of our face of this woman and what she does in the dark, what she is willing to do to advance her career. And y'all going to give her another shot? Y'all going to sit up there and wait for the next scandal to happen, huh? You're going to sit up there and wait for the next child to get victimized by this woman because you don't want it to be as bad for her as you want Ari Spears. You wish death and all type of destruction on Ari Spears because he's making fun of Lizzo. But but Tiffany Haddish had no parts. The girl who brought the kids to the 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 the, the abuse. Yeah, it's not as bad. She literally put them in harm, knowing full on well what he was planning on doing with them kids and then lied to their parents afterwards. Mm. There's no situation where Tiffany Haddish is less culpable than Aerie Spears. I think the kid's still, the, the young boy is still a teenager, but she's an adult now. Yep, yep. Yeah, no, it's crazy shit that people would just turn a blind eye to something like I'm, that. I'm sickened by that, man. Y'all excited? I mean, I better not ever hear nothing about no older man dating no younger woman and how predatory it is. Get it, fuck, get on. Mind your business. That's what you did with Tiffany Haddish, Tiffany Haddish, right? Mind your business. 
Since it don't matter for her, then it don't matter for nobody else. I'm not playing the selective morality games. The same thing that's wrong for them is wrong for her. And she should have to wear that stain on and have that on her reputation. The same way any man that's involved in that would, would have to. Mm -hmm. And they should. You don't get no pass from abusing children. Facts. On to my next L. Does anybody else find it weird that on top of not receiving any kind of backlash for abusing his wife via slapping her, we have all gone and, and <clears throat> made his slap league show insanely popular by posting clips of it on the internet? I haven't seen it. He slaps his wife, and then a show comes out less than two weeks him? later <laughs> called Dana White's Slap League. And it's insanely popular. You can't make that shit up, bro. You can't write it any better than that. After him not receiving any backlash. You can't write the white privilege book any better than that. I, it, 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 it could. Okay. Do you think Bill Cosby. Let's say a couple weeks after him getting released out of jail. Would be able to, I don't know, launch a cocktail mixing show. No. That he does from his from his study. You know what I can see happening before that? Brett Favre being a co-host on Shark Tank. <laughs> <laughs> That'll happen before Bill Cosby gets a oh cocktail show. Oh, my shot. God, man. I, like, what, what other example do you have to show of privilege? What, what other man? I don't even have to boil it down to race at that point because this is more about money and status than it is about him being white. Yeah. Because what other man could publicly fight with his wife like that, come to blows with his wife, and then start a business around slapping people? And it you can't be make insanely this shit popular. Up. Can't make this shit up. Like, Jesus. I, like, I, I, I noticed that, and I'm like, slap league, huh? How interesting. Considering now, I'm, not, I'm not so dense on it that I don't realize that that's obviously something that was in the works well before sure but you would just think the publicity around that would be awful I, I would think i would think that would promote further backlash for that person and i am yet, my nope. i am my last name facts. get it done facts get it done facts the last l before a toss-up is the fact that you know valentine's day is coming up so people are probably getting a little bit more desperate to find, you know, at least a date mm -hmm. at the very least. And so it seems to be that there are a few companies that are willing to take advantage of that. In what way? Uh, upcharging for said services. One worse. Oh, one way worse oh, than for companionship. You mean? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that shit always costs extra on holidays and oh. shit like that. Okay. Right. No, I would no, think no, it talking, would. I'm sorry. You're talking about companionship like. An escort. Yeah. Oh, no. Not what I'm talking about. What are you talking about? Uh, dating service Hinge has decided to roll out a subscription. Now, supposedly their highest subscription. What's which, Hinge? Like, it's like eHarmony or something like that? App. Okay. dating app. So Hinge has a subscription right now. Their highest subscription, which I don't even know what comes with it, is $35 a month. Insane. Insane already. That you're paying thirty five dollars a month for a dating app, but whatever. They are now. What does that go to? Like, how do you spend money trying to find me a match? Something I know what make they that do, make sense to me. I know what they do for Tinder's paid services. They like, they open you up to whatever city you want to be in, and you get more swipes. So it's like unlimited, as opposed to like it stops you at a certain point now, mm -hmm. uh, and then you get like more super likes, which. I don't know how that really helps. But then you also get to see people who might be interested in you. Whatever. That's that's what they claim. Hinge, I don't know. I've, I've never used Hinge, so I don't know. But Hinge has a subscription right now. Their highest is $35 a month. They're rolling out a $60 a month highly motivated dater subscription to where I guess you're finding people who are really motivated to find that special someone. I wonder, sure. are dating services implanting actors into their dating pool 
to help drive the numbers. Because if I enter a dating service mm -hmm. and there are pay tiers, mm -hmm. you have to show a, a clear discrepancy in success rate, right? To make me pay more for the higher tiers of service. Sure. You would have to prove it. That is not what dating is. That's not real human behavior. There's no way to quantify who's more or less compatible with you. Like, because the things that you might have in common may not be important to you or vice versa. Sure. That's not how dating works. I agree. So having a scale, pay scale, based off of compatibility mm -hmm. makes absolutely no sense. You won't know until you meet that person. You have absolutely no, you don't know whether or not the person at the $50 tier is going to be more compatible to you than the person at the $20 tier until you actually meet them and actually pay for it. So it's 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 a weird kind of way unless you are setting people up with people who are on your payroll <laughs> to increase the experience, therefore validating the pay tiers. Or even worse, you end up talking to a AI chat bot. That too. Because how else do you define the pay tiers? Because it's, it's, it's completely erroneous outside of that. Outside of any other controlled factor. Like, come on, man. You're, you're absolutely right. And that is hinge at sixty dollars a month. Oh, I you are fucking crazy. Oh, are they? Go to happy hour. Okay. Get up. Go join a club. You join one of them 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 uh middle aged people walking through the mall groups. Do anything other than giving hinge sixty dollars to find a partner. Go touch grass. Jesus. But if those people who pay the sixty dollars a month are crazy, then the people at Tinder have to be absolutely in fucking sane because they are also rolling out a highly motivated dater uh, subscription model. Do you want to guess at how much a month it may be? hundred dollars. That's a good guess. $500 a month. Okay. The $500 a month. What are those people? Are they, like crazy I, 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 I don't know where we live anymore. I don't know what we're doing. Five hundred dollars a month for fucking Tinder. Dog, do you know how much eggs cost? <laughs> Have you a seen lot. the price of gas? Yeah. You're finding five hundred dollars of disposable income so that a website can find you a girlfriend. Yep. You can find an escort cheaper than that, I'm sure. If they ever get over here, we're doomed. And they, I mean anyone. If anyone can ever d d get past our advanced warning systems or any of our ballistic uh, 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 rocket systems, and they make it to these shores, oh, we done. Done for. We are a weak country. Absolutely. We are weak. Yep. We are, we are beyond all of the weapons that we are able to buy to deter people from invading. Oh, if they get here, it's over. It's over. Done. It's over. We are so weak. Yeah. Oh, my God. My question is, they would have had to have done some sort of market research to lead them to believe that. That somebody would actually pay $500 for this service. Just to. to so, like, what is what comes out of that? Do I get like. I couldn't tell you. Like, I don't. I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> All I heard is that it was their their highly motivated data model subscription model that they're going to roll out loser loser they're calling you a highly motivated dater <laughs> what they want to call you is a loser yes someone who will come to this site and give me five hundred dollars to show them pictures of people they may or may not have a relationship with but you give me the 500 either way yep you no, you are a loser for doing that we're not talking about homeboy with a uh, malleable woman Oh, shit. I actually forgot about that. Okay. All right. Yeah. So I think we talked about this guy <coughs> before. Because, Him specifically? Because he's made a, a, a different viral video. Maybe not. But he, he had a viral video before this mm. of similar problematic discussion. Uh, Yeah. Bro was just getting on there talking about how he enjoyed younger women for the simple fact that they are not malleable. He said, uh. That they're they impressionable impressionable which is worse way worse because impressionable the the exact definition i had to put it on my twitter for those who don't know what that word specifically means 
easily influenced because of a lack of critical ability. The example given is children are highly impressionable and susceptible to advertising. I don't know how, how else you can explain it other than what he did, which is basically I want them to come in with low thresholds, low standards, and be ready to be built up into what I want to make them. I think younger women tend to be more impressionable. I think older women, you know, in my experience, you 30, 33, 35, the experiences that you have at that point is just, you know, a little bit too much for me. And, I, and you know, I, I really think in some cases you really can't teach an old dog new tricks. So I prefer, you know, my women to be of the younger variety. If a woman wants to respect you and give you the, the respect to lead and be her partner, why do you need to be, why do you need to have that level of power over her if you're not trying to manipulate someone? See, it's not power. It's, it's impressionable. I've never seen a successful partnership where the other person wouldn't allow themselves to be impressed upon. If, if I'm a person and I got a vision, I got a plan, I got a whole program, I would think that the person that wants to be with me is willing to learn and willing to adopt some of the ways or even some of the principles that I have. That's not impressionable. Impressionable is basically getting someone to do what you want them to do because they're easily swayed and easily persuaded to do what you want them to do. Who said that? Did you make that up? Well, I like when, when you when you actually. when you hire somebody, you look for somebody that's impressionable. But why would I it, listen? Right, even, so you can even train to, them. So you can when you hire somebody, you're about to train them. Now, and that's why you want them impressionable. If, if, if that is your your thought process of choosing partners, you know what was so crazy about that clip is that the girl in the clip basically gave him the, the definition, definition of it. and then he turned around and asked her, "Who the fuck said that? Where'd you Where'd come you from, from with that? The dictionary, fool." <laughs> You know, they want people to come in for job interviews is impressionable. And then even his explanation, like, he, he, he you put a little bit of truth in with the bullshit. So you say, oh, well, I've never seen a successful relationship where one person didn't oppress upon the other. That's fine. The issue with that is you specifically needing young, impressionable women so that they will take what you're saying to heart. Mm-hmm. I don't need you to be young and impressionable for me to give a sound argument on something, for me to give my point of view on something. I don't necessarily need an argumentative person. Mm -hmm. I just need somebody who's willing to hear logic. That doesn't that that's, that's not the description of an impressionable person. Well, that's the person of a logical person, a reasonable person. Reasonable and impressionable are two different things. Reasonable is smart enough to hear what you're saying and and to process it critically but at the same time i'm not a child so you're not able to manipulate me into things that aren't true or that i don't believe in impressionable sometimes manipulation looks like understanding oh well i talked to him and now i feel differently about it right you could have been manipulated not knowing because you don't have the critical thinking skills to get through what he just said that's literally the only thing you would want in an impressionable person for, for. is to manipulate so them. that they're not thinking about it too long they just going to do what you tell them to do because, oh, well, he's older and he's the authority, so might as well trust him. That's a terrible fucking relationship to be in. For, uh, and it, 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 for always, it always wears me out because I, I never want to, like, like I said, man, I'm not Peter Police, so I'm not about to tell you, oh, you can't date past this certain age or you can't go down past that certain age. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just. Like Leo and his under 25. I, I, I'm just not. I, I don't have no control over that. And I don't sure. think it's right or wrong either way. Sure. But when you're specifically looking for young people because you know that they can't process at your level, that's manipulative. You're yeah, looking to control people beyond their own autonomy. Yeah. Which is sick. It is. It's weird. Yeah. There, there, there's no there's nothing good about that. And bro decided to put that out on the If airways. you're saying for some reason you have more in common with the young women. Okay. Well, and maybe you're immature. I don't know. <laughs> maybe you just like young stuff. But yeah. hearing you say that you want impressionable women so that you can get them to do what you want them to do, That's I'm crazy. not letting nobody I, f I care about fuck with you. Facts. That's weirdo behavior, bro. I agree. That nigga was crazy to put that on the airwaves and it became a viral. And clip make it sound so normal. He is now known as the young and impressionable chaser. And then what I didn't hear was. Are you impressionable for her? 
is she going to be able to impress upon you things that you need to improve on or no, change? Of course not. Like there was no mention of that. Of course not. Are you going to be impressioned by her? No, because I am of sound Or mind. should she naturally assume that since you're an old fuck that you can't be impressed upon? That you won't change, you can't change. And she should just accept that. She should be impressionable. You shouldn't be because you're old given your standards. This only works one way. I want my women to be See how quickly be niggas' ideologies unravel when you just start asking questions. And that is something that young women won't do. Well, his idea unraveled in that clip because she offered because he wasn't talking to young women yeah he wasn't talking to women that was in their early 20s i actually i i i um i i know those two girls like they make a lot of one of them makes the inspirational live your life the way you want to type videos Mm -hmm. and the other chick she makes a lot of uh, youtube shorts Mm -hmm. um she talks about dating a lot relationships men and women um but i've seen them pop up before the girl with the braces no, not that, not that one, <laughs> not that girl. Men are fucking stupid. Fuck all men. Not that one. <laughs> <laughs> but no, he, fam is wild, and I, I just would not want to be known as that guy. It's always a bad thing. Who would when want to be are, known as that? It's always bad when you are the the main topic of discussion on Twitter. It's never good. Who, who wants to be the nigga who can't get an invite to the house because he can't bring you around his daughters? <laughs> Facts though. Like, who wants to be that? Him. He is perfectly fine. Who wants to be the guy that you got to watch at all the fucking holidays because he like young women? Mm. Like, nobody want... Why do you want that on you? And then what does it say about you that there are millions of potential partners within your age group and that you specifically look outside of it for some sort of what you deem to be advantage? It just makes you seem like you're you were He's a predator. Well, yes. But it also makes it seem as if you are less apt to gaining a partner. Oh, oh, sure. If you have to specifically set the standards like that. Well, like if I go out here and hoop, if I go out here and play basketball and I make a rule that I'm not gonna play anybody over the age of sixteen, what does that say about my skill? It means you're trash. How good are you at, at getting women if you specifically set the bar ten years your junior? means you are you are working at a level that is much beneath yours. It's like reading at a I need it's like grade it's, level. it's like a handicap in golf. <laughs> I know I'm 25, but I read at a fourth grade level <laughs> just to make things easier for me. <laughs> Yo, what the hell? <laughs> Give us your thoughts on dubs and L's in the comments below. Give us your dubs and L's. Make sure you come back every Wednesday at 10 a.m. for another dubs and L segment. Absolutely. And make sure you check out our previous dubs and L's where we talked about everything in a recap for last week. Uh, And then, like you said, make sure you subscribe. We like to do this every Wednesday at 10.